If you're like me and you keep up with some of the latest asthma literature, you've probably come across the term phenotyping. But what exactly does that mean? Well, as you probably know, in the past, asthma has been classified as either allergic or non-allergic disease. But this has largely fallen out of favor, and in fact, it's now recognized that asthma is a much more heterogeneous disease. Because of this, phenotyping is now considered a necessary part of the diagnostic workup of poorly controlled asthmatics. After watching this video, I think you'll find that you're much more familiar with the concept of phenotyping and also how to utilize biomarkers in the clinical setting. While symptoms and lung function testing were used to help you confirm a diagnosis of asthma, they really tell you little to nothing about the presence of underlying inflammation. And you see, airway inflammation is key to asthma. Eosinophilic asthma is now one of the most recognized inflammatory subsets of asthma. Through the release of toxic mediators and cytokines, it leads to a substantially increased risk of exacerbation. Amber, I'm glad I ran into you. I have this pulmonary clinic patient just this afternoon who I'm pretty sure has eosinophilic asthma. Hmm, okay, that's pretty interesting, but what about her symptoms make you think that? So it was adult onset. Uh, she's having these pretty frequent exacerbations and they're always severe. If it's not a hospitalization, she's in urgent clinic to see me. Hmm, sounds like we need to get moving on this patient. So have you got any lung function testing on her? Yeah, actually. So here are PFTs over the last year. Best FEV1, 62%. Ooh, gosh. Yeah, that does sound severe, but have you tried steroids? Yeah, I feel like all the time. So every month she's getting a prednisone burst and you know, for two weeks or so, she's okay, and then it's right back to square one. Hmm. Gosh, so you've already got her maxed out on your inhaled steroid and lava, plus frequent steroids. I agree that this does smell like eosinophilic asthma, but I need more. I need, we got to confirm this. So, I've actually been checking her biomarkers, and her absolute eosinophil counts are typically 500 to 700, but with a normal IgE. Hmm. All right. Elevated eosinophils, normal IgE with compatible clinical symptoms. I agree with you. I think you've diagnosed eosinophilic asthma. Great. So she's going to be so excited. She finally has an answer and I'm going to start working on other treatments then. All right. Well, good luck with that. Thanks, Amber. Not a problem. Well, I hope you can see now how important phenotyping is. It's going to allow you the ability to select for more advanced and targeted treatment options. To aid in your selection from these more advanced therapies, it'll be helpful for you to categorize based upon their inflammatory phenotype. You've heard us mention the eosinophilic asthmatic. This patient will have a high blood eosinophil count with a normal or only slightly elevated IgE. On the other hand, you'll have the allergic phenotype. This patient should have a high serum IgE and either a normal or only slightly elevated blood eosinophil count. Here's the person you'll want to confirm the presence of allergy, and this can be done through blood testing or skin prick analysis. Lastly is the non-eosinophilic phenotype. This can be difficult to confirm given our currently available clinical biomarkers, but may be suggestive by a low IgE and low blood eosinophil count. In fact, you can break this off into a neutrophilic phenotype, the latter representing the lack of abnormal inflammation. So now that you've got this down, you can pick which category your patient falls into and help identify AIDS that might clinically benefit them. Let's take our eosinophilic phenotype. You can select from anti-interleukin-5 therapy like mebolizumab or reslizumab. On the other hand, in your allergic patient, they may benefit from omelizumab provided their serum IgE falls between 30 and 700 international units per milliliter. Lastly, non-eosinophilic phenotypes, again, will be difficult to guide therapy, but in your neutrophilic, you might want to consider investigation for antibiotics, whereas your posigranulocytic phenotype may benefit from bronchial thermoplasty. I hope you find this helpful for how to help guide management in your severe asthma population. So in conclusion, we've seen that phenotyping can be a really useful concept in our severe asthma patients. You can utilize the biomarkers IgE or blood eosinophils to help select for more advanced and targeted therapies. Hey, Amber, great news. I just got done talking with the patient and she's agreeable to starting anti-interleukin-5 therapy. 
Well, that's fantastic. And I can't wait to hear how she's doing in the next few months. Thanks so much for all your help, Amber. Not a problem. Good work. Thanks for watching, and that concludes our video.